Hello, my name is Jeff Janess, and I'm the Professor of Geographic Information Systems at the NAU School of Forestry. Are you wondering what you can do with a forestry degree? Well, there's definitely a lot of things you can do, ranging from logging, wildland fires, wildlife management, botany, recreation, economics, social scientists, and ecosystem research. Almost certainly you'll see parts of the landscape that few people get to see. And speaking as someone who did get a forestry degree here at NAU many years ago, I'll tell you that one of the coolest things I think you can do is to become a spatial ecologist. I've made a living at it for 30 years now, traveling around the world, seeing beautiful places, working on interesting projects, and learning things I could never have imagined back when I was just starting out. So what is spatial ecology, and what do we spatial ecologists do? Well, we work in all branches of forestry, ecology, and land management. We especially love the spatial aspects of the work, when the location of something matters and we start getting excited. We're fascinated by how wildlife species move or are generally distributed over the landscape. We want to know why they are where they are. What is it about the habitat, the local community of species, that causes them to select an area? How influenced are they by neighbors? We're interested in how things connect with each other across space, and whether simple straight line as the crow flies distances are important, or if connections are restricted to specific habitat types. For example, deer and elk probably pay attention to how far it is to travel in a straight line overland between these two water sources. But fish species can't cross open ground like this, so they care a lot more about the distance through the network of drainages, streams, and rivers. Spatial analysis helps us figure this kind of thing out, and spatial analysis is what spatial ecologists do. When we're working with wildlife, we're interested in how animals move and why they move where they do. We want to know if animals move quicker or slower through different habitat types, and why. We want to understand migration patterns and how these might change with increasing human populations and climate change. We learn about how communities of plant species interact with each other over time. and This will become increasingly important as the climate keeps warming up and vegetation communities fracture and they readapt to new conditions. We want to know how both species and landscapes get fragmented into isolated populations and how gene flow can be maintained between fragmented habitats. We want to see where bottlenecks to gene flow occur. These bottlenecks can stop individuals from a species from crossing through and isolating the subpopulations on either side of the corridor. And these isolated populations are a lot more likely to suffer and eventually die out, so finding these bottlenecks helps us to effectively reconnect these populations. We're interested in predicting what conditions might be in one location based on observed conditions in neighboring locations. This helps us to understand the landscape and to predict how species may behave there kind of analysis helps to determine critical habitat to preserve in order to protect endangered species. We want to know why an animal might select a home range, and the first step toward figuring this out is figuring what that home range is. Spatial ecology provides a lot of cool tools for determining a home range, and many more for understanding why that region might be special. We can generate heat maps on the landscape, which shows us where important features are and helps us understand different phenomena. Here we had a bunch of bald eagle locations, and a heat map helps us determine where this eagle seems to be spending most of its time. Spatial ecologists are interested in the shape of the land, such as how rugged it is and how much sunlight it gets. We're interested in how water flows over the landscape. When it rains, where does the water flow? Can we look at a spot on the ground and figure out what parts of the landscape drain into that location? Spatial analysis gives us tools for figuring this out. And drones are definitely popular with spatial ecologists these days. They're such a great tool for collecting data. We can use them to survey hard to reach or dangerous areas, and we can use them to generate maps of our areas or even build 3D models of the landscape. We definitely love maps. Now, for many of us, a good map is as hypnotic as staring into a campfire. The tools we use to study and learn about the landscape also let us draw the landscape in interesting ways. As a wise man once said, a good map is a magic carpet to faraway places. And these are just a few of the things you can do as a spatial ecologist, and a forestry degree is just your ticket to ride. NAU School of Forestry is one of the top forestry schools in the U.S., and I hope to see you here someday. You take care.